Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of To A God Unknown by John Steinbeck. Dane reads... By the Nobel Prize winning author of Travels With Charlie and East of Eden. So I'm going to go ahead and read the blurb, then I'm going to go through, check out some of my tabs, I don't have too many, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, John Steinbeck, winner of the Nobel Prize. To a God Unknown. Here is one of John Steinbeck's most unforgettable novels, combining unsurpassed artistic mastery with a searing story of the reckless passions of nature and of the flesh. John Steinbeck is universally acclaimed as one of America's greatest living authors. His theme has always been the world of man in all its incredible multiplicity. Love, poverty, humour, pathos, tragedy, passion. His characters have become living symbols of our time. And his writing is very much is about character uh, like a sense of time and place, I suppose, and less of uh, less of it is about the plot and more of it's about the writing. Unfortunately, I just didn't really relate to many of the characters in this one, but there are a few paragraphs I still enjoyed. And so we get this, uh, because the rain stopped and then it came back again. And this is very much about waiting for the rain, because it's like this farming community, uh, which is why I didn't really care for it, because there's a lot of, like, agriculture and animal agriculture and stuff. But anyway, Oh yes, the rain came after ten years. Floods of it came. Then the grass came up again and the trees were green. We were glad then, I still remember it. The people down in Nuestra Senora had a fiesta in the rain. Only a little roof over the guitar players to keep the strings dry. And the people were drunk and dancing in the mud. They got drunk on the water. Not only Mexicans either. Father Angelo came upon them and he made them stop. What for? Joseph demanded. Well, you don't know what the people were doing there in the mud. Father Angelo was pretty mad. He said we'd let the devil in. He drove out the devil and made the people wash themselves and stop rolling in the wallows. He put penances on everybody. Father Angelo was pretty mad. He stayed right there until the rain stopped. The people were drunk, you say? Yes, they were drunk for a week and they did bad things, took off their clothes. Juanito interrupted him. They were happy. The wells were dry before, senor. The hills were white like ashes. It made the people happy when the rain came. They couldn't bear it to be so happy and they did bad things. People always do bad things when they're too happy. And then we get this very prophetic line. Uh, so we get this. He modelled her future for her. There's a time coming, he said, prophetically, when women will earn their own bread. There's no reason why a woman can't learn a trade. Take you, for instance, he said. There's a time coming, and not far off either, when a girl like you will be making her wage and be damned to the first man that wants to marry her. Imagine that. Imagine women making a wage. Imagine them making an equal wage. Now that's too preposterous. And then we get this, um... I remember a thing Elizabeth said. I don't know when I noticed it, but just now. You said yourself it's the time of day, and this picture is important in this time of day. What? He asked. Cat's tails lie flat and straight and motionless when they're eating. Yes, he nodded. Yes, I know. And that's the only time they're ever straight, and that's the only time they're ever still. How about when they're asleep? Maybe my cat's just a weirdo. And then we get this little bit, which is like some interesting folk tales, I guess, about conception. And there was endless talk of babies, how they were born and all the accidents that might occur, and how the memory of the pain fades from a woman's mind, and how boys differ from girls in their earliest habits. There was endless anecdote. Rama could recount stories of children born with tails, with extra limbs, with mouths in the middle of their backs. But these were not frightening because Rama knew why such things were. Some were the results of drink and some of disease, but the worst, the very worst monstrosities came of conception during a menstrual period. But then this couple's trying to name their child and we get, what would his name be, Joseph? Why, he said, I guess it will be John. There has always been either a Joseph or a John. John has always been the son of Joseph and Joseph the son of John. It has always been that way. She nodded and her eyes looked far away. Yes, it's a good name. It won't ever give him any trouble or make him embarrassed. It hasn't even much meaning. There have been so many Johns, all kinds of men, good and bad. She took the breast away and buttoned her dress and then turned the baby to pat the air bubbles out of him. Have you noticed, Joseph, Johns are either good or bad, never neutral. If a neutral boy has that name, he doesn't keep it, he becomes Jack. She turned the baby around to look in his face and it squinted its eyes like a little pig. Your name is John, do you hear? She said playfully. Do you hear that? I hope it never gets to be Jack. I'd rather you were very bad than Jack. And this is an interesting line. Everything seems to work with a recurring rhythm except life. There is only one birth and only one death. Nothing else is like that. And then uh, there's a character which kind of reminds me of me, I guess. It says, uh, he doesn't like things caged. He puts himself in the place of the beasts and can feel how frightened they are. He doesn't like fear. He catches it too easily. So yeah, all in all, to a god unknown, I mean, 
the, the objectively and subjectively are two different things because I didn't again I didn't really relate too much to the subject matter I thought it was beautifully written and actually in the way it's structured and stuff like it's not far off a perfect novel like I would say uh, sub objectively this is at least a 4 out of 5 maybe a 4.5 out of 5 but for me it was unfortunately a 3 out of 5 it was okay um, Literally the bits that I read out to you were really the only bits I enjoyed. The rest of it was just like, oh, just reading about these people I don't care about. But I am one step closer to completing all of the John Steinbeck books, which is on my list. So I'm pretty happy about that. So there we have it. That's what I made of To A God Unknown by John Steinbeck. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.